Welcome to the first video of two that we're going to be doing with asymmetrical projectiles. Up until now, we've been looking at projectiles that start and land on the same surface, the same level, I should say. So what happens if we have this? All right, we've got a ball or a cannonball or whatever it might be. It's been projected at an angle 25 degrees from the horizontal upwards, and then it goes down. Now remember the key concepts we've looked so far with parabolic um, trajectory, trajectories and motion is that we only consider this part of the journey, starting and finishing at the same location. And when we did that, we of course, the first thing we wanted to do was find out the time of flight. And so we use this equation here. And finding the time of flight was easy because then we went, okay, well, the time of flight can be found if it's a trajectory like this and stops there and it's symmetrical, then we go, okay, well, we're going to treat this if, it, if it's just a horizontal one, and we start there, and we just find the time of flight for it to fall, and we did that by, um, if we knew the height. If we knew what the height was, we could put the value in there, and we could make that equal to zero, because we're starting from here, and we could find the time of flight for half of it, and then we times it by two to find the complete flight. If we didn't know the height, then we could still use this equation, and then we could go, okay, well, if we knew the initial velocity, right, we could say that the change in, change in y was zero, because it starts here and finishes there, and so the change in y was zero. And if we knew the initial velocity there, we could then put it, the value in, and we could find out a time of flight. This one's a bit different, though. We, get, we do know the initial velocity here. I'm going to say it's 20 meters per second. But the problem arises because it's an asymmetrical, right? So let's have a look to see how we would do this. So with this equation here, this no longer equals zero now. The change in height here is five meters. So the initial height is zero. The final height is negative five. So the change in, the change in y here which would be the final minus the initial. So it's going to be minus five, actually, because the final minus five take away zero still gives you minus five. Then we have the components. So let's work out the components here. So that is our components there. So we can then now rewrite this here, where if we're talking about in the y direction now, so this is going to be 8.45t, and that's going to be minus 4.9t squared. So now if we make this side equal to 0, 0 equals 5 plus 8.45t minus 4.9t squared. And so now we have a quadratic equation. So now we have to use the quadratic formula to find out a value for t. So whenever you don't get a symmetrical situation, it's actually something like this, an asymmetrical, you're going to have to use a quadratic equation to find out a value, possible value for the time of flight. So the quadratic formula is minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And we have this being A, this is B, and that's C. So when we plug all those in, we've got two, we get two possibilities. X is either equal to 2.19 seconds or minus 0 0.46 seconds. It's not going to be this one here. We can't have minus time. So we're going to have 2.19 seconds. That's the one that we're going to use for the time of flight to go from here down to there. So that's the time of flight, so let's write it over here. What about the range? How do we work out the range? Well, remember our range equation. Our range equation was the change in x is equal to ux times t. Well, we do know ux, we found it up here, and we now know t, so now we can find out what the range is. Now we need to work out the maximum height. So with the maximum height, we can use this equation here, v squared in the y direction is equal to u squared in the y direction plus 2 times the change in y. So let's just, we're looking at this section here. If we say that at the maximum height, the velocity in the y direction is 0, okay, and we know the initial velocity we, in the y direction, we calculated that before. Oop, of course, I forgot an acceleration due to gravity there because it's 2as or 2ay, so let's chuck that in. Always double check, so let's rewrite that. So that's going to give us a minus here, and if we take that, if we take this all over to the other side, 
All right, so when you plug that into the calculator and do a bit of algebra, you should get 3.64 meters. So that is only for that height though. We now, of course, need to add this height, which is five. So the total height, right, or total change in Y, is 3.64 plus the 5, 8.64 meters. Um, so that's how you do the, the height, etc. Only the last thing that sometimes they ask you is what is the velocity of the particle when it lands? Because remember, when we had symmetrical, the initial velocity here was equal to the final velocity, but because we've got an extra travel time here, the velocity is going to be different. So I'm going to rub some of this out to give me some more working space, and then we're going to find the final impact velocity of this cannonball. All right, let's find the impact velocity. Now, if we draw on this diagram here, here's the impact velocity here. And so that's coming down like that. We're going to find the final velocity at impact. And so what we've got to remember here is that the final velocity at impact squared is equal to the velocity in the x direction squared plus the velocity in the y direction squared. OK, so how do we find that, right? So if we draw our triangle here, right? So this velocity here has a y component and an x component. So if I, if I do that at the right size, right, like that. Um, how do we find that? Well, the x component of the velocity is constant. It doesn't change. So let's draw, write that in. What about the y velocity? Well, remember the equation before we had vy is equal to u plus at. Well, we know that um, the velocity, the initial velocity here, we calculated before, which is 8.45. We know the acceleration due to gravity, minus 9.8, and we want to find the velocity at a specific time. Well, the time it, it impacts was 2.19 seconds. So that's going to give us the velocity in the y direction. And when you do that, minus 13.01 meters per second, and the minus is just saying it's going downwards. Okay, so it's going down in the negative direction here. So now, of course, we can put that in here, 13.01 squared. And of course, we take the square root of that. So the final velocity, the magnitude of the velocity is 23 point, sorry, 22.31. Of course, we have to come up with the direction because it's a vector. So with, the, with the, our vector now, we've got to remember that we've got vy. So if we, we want to find this angle here. So I'm just going to rub this out so we can see a bit clearly. We want to find this angle here below the horizontal. And so vy, we're going to move over here, vy. And then we've got Vx here. So it's opposite over adjacent, which is 10. OK. Opposite over adjacent, which is 10. So we're going to find that down here. So we're going to go um, tan theta is equal to Vy over Vx. Therefore, theta is equal to tan inverse tan Vy over Vx. And Vy. We said is there, 13.01. Vx, we said didn't change, 18.13. And when we do that, it turns to be 35.7 degrees below the horizontal. So that's how you find a few, um, that's how you find a few things with the first asymmetric problem. Hopefully that makes sense while well, I put these lids back on because it's steaming hot in here. Okay, so they don't dry out. Always good to remember. So hopefully all that makes sense. We might do another video. I'm looking on going the other way, going from up. So I go from below to up and uh, see how that works. All right, see you in the next video.